Now we're going to look at plants and animals in a little more detail and outline how they exist with each other in the woodland and contribute to the ecosystem. See if you can draw a food chain and a food web and place the plants and animals in the correct position on your diagram. The plants we all associate with woodland are bluebells, but there are many more and they all play an important part in the health of the woodland and provide nectar for insects. Do you remember the species mentioned that indicate ancient woodland? Wild garlic, called ransoms, and stitchwort, and bugle. There are other plants to look out for besides these. The oak tree, for example, is particularly rich in food for many species. Plants such as a fern called polypody can grow on oaks. Small insects hide in the foliage and also the deep crevices in the bark. Acorns are the fruit of the oak and contain the seed. Grey squirrels can get very fat on acorns, but our native red squirrels do not digest a chemical called tallin in the acorn very well and can't make good use of this abundant food supply. Birds and mice will also feed on acorns in the autumn. Some small insects burrow into a bud on the oak and other trees which cause a gall to fall. There are many varieties of gall, the most common being the marble gall. See if you can find some next time you're in the woods. The mighty oak is good for nest building for birds and squirrels. A squirrel's nest is called a dray and they are built high up and well hidden in the tree. Older, ancient and or damaged trees usually have lots of nooks and crannies and they can also support lichen, moss and fungi. Rot holes, snags and cracks, gaps made by splits and loose bark dead and dying wood behind ivy and other dense climbers and even holes made by woodpeckers can all make potentially good roost sites for bats, squirrels and birds. Apart from those already mentioned there are many other species of tree growing in the woodland. So take a book with you and see how many you can identify. Here are a few more to start off with. Ash, field maple, sycamore and beech. Invertebrates are animals without a backbone. Ants are the most well known. Some, such as the ladybird, have an exoskeleton, which is a shell on the outside. These are called beetles. The single most important wood decay resource for many invertebrates is a large standing living tree with decaying hardwood. Around 1700 of invertebrate species in the British Isles are dependent on decaying wood in order to complete their life cycles, which means our ancient trees are very important. The invertebrate community living in a tree often changes as the tree decays. Some invertebrates are more dependent on the type of decay than on the species of the tree itself. Pollination by insects such as bees and butterflies ensures the plant's survival by helping the plants reproduce, by carrying pollen from one plant to another as they feed, and in return the insects receive nectar, so they thrive and reproduce to provide food for those higher up the food chain. Woodland butterflies include the brimstone, orange tip, and the speckled wood. Wood lice thrive on dead wood and in turn the wood lice and other insects are eaten by birds. The relationship between ancient trees and fungi is very close. Within the woodland ecosystem fungi plays an important role in recycling nutrients. Each tree creates a unique support system 
and it is likely that rather than being detrimental to the tree, fungi actually prolongs its life. Fungi can act as essential decomposers and recyclers of plant remains and or transporters of essential nutrients for the health and optimum growth of trees. They also provide an essential softening of the wood for invertebrates to take advantage of. Small birds will feed on seeds, dropping some along the way to germinate and grow into new plants. They also eat insects, keeping their numbers in check. Small birds may also provide food for larger birds, such as the sparrowhawk. Some birds are dependent on trees for the bulk of their food, as insects are found within the decaying wood, crevices and foliage. Most broadleaf woods have an abundance of birds, with both resident and spring and summer visitors among them. Resident birds usually feed on the wealth of insects, worms and other invertebrates for at least part of the year, turning to seeds and nuts during the winter months, while others feed on them throughout the year. There are usually lots of members of the tit family too, great tits, coal tits, blue tits and long-tailed tits in any broadleaf woodland. Animals which give birth to live young, which they suckle, are called mammals. Humans, among many others, come into this group. In most woods, the fox is the mammal that is the top of the food chain, as it has no natural predators. Red foxes are solitary hunters who feed on mice, squirrels, rabbits, birds and other small game. But their diet is very flexible as a fox will also eat fruit, frogs and even worms. They will also clear up carrion. Squirrels bury seeds in the autumn. It's thought they use a map in their head plus a keen sense of smell to find the buried catches. There are always some seeds that get left behind that will germinate and grow into new trees. This is their contribution to the woodland. Rabbits will move into woodland and when they do they can have a detrimental impact on the ground flora. Rabbits are food for foxes and birds of prey but are herbivores themselves. When they die Flies will lay eggs on their remains in the summer, which become maggots that will be eaten by birds. This happens to other animals as well. Hedgehogs prefer woodland edges. Their diet consists of beetles, worms, caterpillars, slugs and almost anything else they can catch. But they are a prey for foxes and badgers. Voles and mice feed on seeds such as hazelnuts, acorns, ash keys and sycamore keys. They also like fruit and green plants. In a mixed deciduous woodland they eat seeds for most of the winter, buds in the early spring, caterpillars, worms and centipedes in early summer and blackberries and fungi in the autumn. Food is cached in underground burrows. They are food for tawny owls and barn owls. Dormice frequent most woods on the Isle of Wight and are found in some areas in mainland Britain. Because they are nocturnal, they are rarely seen. They feed on seeds, fruit and insects. The hazelnut is a particular favourite, but competition is fierce for hazelnuts and where there are squirrels, red or grey, they take the bulk of the crop. Badgers are nocturnal and are rarely seen during the day. When not active, badgers usually lie up in an extensive system of underground tunnels and nesting chambers known as a set. They eat virtually anything including berries, worms and hedgehogs.